Hey folks, good morning. Happy Thursday. Welcome to What's New in ForeFlight in 2019. There's always something new in ForeFlight. This year is no exception to that. We've had a lot of new features we're very excited to introduce this year. And we're going to go through all of that over the next 45 minutes. My name is Ryan McBride. I lead the product design team at ForeFlight. So basically my team is responsible for making the features within ForeFlight easy to use, easy to understand. I learned to fly at the University of North Dakota, and I learned to build and design software at Michigan State University. And I've been doing both of those things for about 10 years now. We have a full forum schedule all week. Uh, it's on our website, foreflight.com slash EAA. We have a variety of courses, basic, advanced, what's new courses, obviously, and uh, a course specifically for students and CFIs. And you can see the schedule on our website. Also, simply for attending today, you're eligible for FAA WINGS credit. Uh, so if you are interested in getting WINGS credit for attending, you can go to this website address, enter your name and the forum you attended, and we'll credit your WINGS account for you. Also, we have some cards up here on the table in the, the top right here, and those have the URL on them and some instructions on how to do that. I'll leave this URL up at the end of the presentation for anyone who needs to copy it down. Also, at the end of the presentation, we're going to have probably 20, 25 minutes for any questions anyone has. So I'm going to stick around and we'll answer we'll do a little Q&A after the presentation's over. So just by a show of hands, uh, how many people here fly with ForeFlight today? Awesome, most of you. Well, ForeFlight's actually been around since 2007. Uh, it, would it was founded by Tyson Wise, the CEO, and Jason Miller, the CTO. Tyson and Jason met online. Uh, they were both pilots. They met on some aviation discussion forums. And 2007 was an important year. It was the year that the iPhone was first introduced by Apple. And Tyson and Jason got to thinking about the potential this device had to be really useful for pilots. And so they, they started working on some ideas. And the very first version of ForeFlight was actually just the ability to enter a METAR. And ForeFlight would spit out the, uh, the actual uh, METAR for that, that uh, airport code. Since then, we've come a long way. We pride ourselves on building the most elegant, high-performing apps in aviation. We also pride ourselves on something we call the fanatical pilot support team. Everyone on the support team at ForeFlight is a pilot. Most are instrument rated, CFI, CFII. They're all ForeFlight experts, and they're available all the time for any questions or comments you have. I'm going to give you some information at the end of the presentation on how best to contact our support team. We're proud to say we've been the number one selling aviation app since 2010. So let's talk about 2019. We love shipping new features. That's something we pride ourselves on. And 2019 has really been an incredible year for new features. In fact, we've had 10 releases already this year. Seven major releases with new functionality and three minor releases with improvements, performance enhancements, that sort of thing. In January, we had our first release of the year. That was 11.0. And we followed that up quickly with 11.1 .1 in February. 11.2 came out in March. 11.3 in April, 11.4 in May, 11.5 in June, and the latest version of ForeFlight, which is 11.6, came out just a couple weeks ago, the beginning of July. We're going to walk through all of the features in all of those releases today. But instead of going release by release, I think a better way to think about the things we've announced this year is more in terms of what phase of flight these features are going to be most useful to you in. So today I'd like to walk through some of the new features uh, in basically three categories. The first is planning, so features that are related to planning a flight and making informed flight planning decisions. In route features, things that you'll use when you are airborne with ForeFlight to improve your situational awareness. And then finally, post flight, features that are going to help you review your flight, log your flight, and perhaps improve uh, on the next flight you take. So let's talk about planning first. In ForeFlight Mobile, there are basically two areas of the application where you do the majority of your flight planning. There is the Flights tab, which is in the bottom left here. That is a form, a flight plan form that you can fill out, generate routes, um, get weather briefings, that sort of thing. And then there is the Maps tab on the right there. The Maps tab is fl the same flight planning functionality but centered around a map view. And you can plan your flight in either view. I want to talk about some of the features that are new in each of these tabs today. So we'll start with the Flights tab. One thing we were excited to announce recently is something we call the Alternate Advisor. One of the primary uh, motivators for the things that we decide to build and release is customer feedback and things that customers tell us they would find useful. 
And we heard from a lot of customers that choosing alternates can be challenging sometimes, figuring out a suitable alternate for a flight plan. And so we got our heads together and we built a feature we think is going to make that a little bit easier. It's called the Alternate Advisor. When you are on the Flights tab, there is an alternate field. In previous versions of Four Flight, you would have to just think of your own alternate that you wanted to fly to, and you could enter it here. And then Four Flight would calculate the time and additional fuel requirements to meet your alternate fuel minimums. When you tap on this field in the latest version of Four Flight, it will actually start suggesting alternates for you. This view basically has two sections. There is a top section, the map view, which shows you your destination airport and then nearby suitable alternates and the direct route to each of them. And then underneath that is a list of all of those alternates. For each of them, we give you the airport code, name, the uh, weather conditions. So if your estimated time of arrival is in the future, we'll show you the forecast weather conditions at that time right out of the terminal forecast. We also highlight the longest runway that's available, if it's towered or not, and any procedures that are available at that airport. <coughs> Excuse me. On the right-hand side is uh, the additional time required to get to that alternate airport, and how much fuel would you would need to uh, carry on board to go from your destination to that alternate. You can select an alternate in the list, and when you do that, at the top of the screen, there will be a route from your destination to that alternate highlighted for you. It's worth noting that if you have your own alternate in mind that's not in the list of suggestions, you can always just type it into the alternate field here, and Forflight will use that instead. So select your alternate, tap the Add Alternate button, and it will be pre-filled into the alternate field in the flight plan form. Another view we've been enhancing in this flight's form is the Route Advisor. For those who aren't familiar with the Route Advisor, when you are in the flight form and you're planning your flight, if you scroll down in this form, there is a route section and you can enter a route here. But you can also tap on that green routes button. You can see in this case, it, it has the, the number 11 in it. It's telling me that there are 11 suitable routes between my departure and my destination that I've entered. And if I tap on this, I get a view called the Route Advisor. It looks similar to the Alternate Advisor, but this is showing me complete routes. At the top of the screen are all of the possible routes visualized on the map, and at the bottom of the screen are a list of all of the routes sorted by where they came from. For example, you can see ATC cleared routes here, recently cleared routes between the departure and destination by other aircraft. The one we've been working on enhancing, however, is the recommended route. If you're on the Performance Plus subscription, you have access to the recommended route. This is an optimized route. It's the most time and fuel efficient way to get from A to B at your estimated time of departure based on the current winds aloft forecast and your aircraft's performance. However, one of the interesting things about this is the most optimum route is not necessarily the most likely route to get cleared by air traffic control. And so we've been working on ways to sort of balance those two things, time and fuel optimization and likelihood of getting cleared as filed. And we've made some changes behind the scenes and as of the latest version of ForeFlight, 89% of the recommended routes that ForeFlight generates are cleared as filed. So basically, if you select that recommended route, 9 out of 10 times, you're going to get cleared as filed, which is really great. You can tap on any of the routes in the Route Advisor. You'll get a preview highlighted on the map, and then you can tap the Select Route button, and it will add it to your flight. Speaking of uh, being cleared as filed, we've been working on uh, making it much more obvious to the pilot what's going on with their flight plan in the air traffic control system. Specifically, we've added a, a new field on the flights form that lets you compare what you filed versus what you should expect to be cleared as by air traffic control. This is the iPhone on the screen right here, but the iPad looks the same. You'll notice I have two fields here. Once I've filed the flight plan, I'll get my filed route here. And underneath it, I can see the expected route. There's a lot of benefits to filing with ForeFlight Mobile. One of them is when you file your flight plan, ForeFlight sends it off to the air traffic control system. It's called ERAM. It's basically the FAA's supercomputer that handles all the different flight plans that come in and out. And when an IFR flight plan goes into the system, one of two things happens. It's either going to be cleared as filed, Great. Or it's going to be cleared with some amendments, with some changes. 
Well, Four Flight doesn't just hand it off and go away. We actually continue to monitor the status of your flight plan for you in the background. And because of that, we can listen in and figure out what the air traffic control system is thinking. And if it's going to generate a new expected route for you after you file, we push it back to the application so you can see it right here. So you have your expected route before you even call up clearance delivery. This is not a clearance, it's just a heads up about what the route air traffic control is expecting to assign you. Of course, if you file a route and it's going to be cleared as filed, then we just consolidate those routes here. So you can see what you filed is what is expected. Another new feature we were uh, really excited to get out recently and that was really driven by customer input was takeoff and landing performance. Forflight can actually calculate your aircraft's takeoff and landing performance right in the app in the latest release. Before I go into how it works, I want to point something out. The takeoff and landing calculations that Forflight is able to do are based on manufacturer published performance data, meaning they are not physics based modeling. If there is a characteristic of your aircraft that is not published, ForeFlight cannot do the calculation. So for example, if your aircraft in the POH, in the performance section, does not list takeoff and landing performance under, for example, a tailwind condition, then ForeFlight can't tell you how your aircraft's gonna perform if the runway you select has a tailwind. So it's important to note, it's basically an easier way to calculate your takeoff and landing performance versus going into the POH and tracing out the graphs. So let's take a look at how it works. When you're in the flights form, if you're a Performance Plus customer, you have two new buttons next to your departure and destination. Next to your departure, there's a takeoff button and destination has a landing button. Let's say we were going to depart from this airport, San Diego. I can tap on the takeoff button, but before I do that, I want to make sure that I've planned out my entire flight. If I scroll down in the flights form, I'm able to verify all of the fuel calculations and all of my weight restrictions. Make sure everything looks correct, nothing is out of limits. It's important to do this before you calculate takeoff, because these are the numbers that ForeFlight's going to use to give you the takeoff information. So I'll verify my flight, and then I'll go back into the top of the form, and I'll tap on that takeoff button. You can see at the top of the screen, there's a runway field. And in this case, it says none. I haven't told ForeFlight what runway I'm going to be departing from yet. So let's do that. I'll tap on the runway field, and I can see all of the runways available to me at the airport. I can see the headwind, tailwind, and crosswind components for each runway based on the latest METAR report. And, and I can tap on the details button next to each runway to get all the information that I expect to find in the chart supplement, the airport facility directory. So I'll select the runway that I want to depart from. And when I go back, we can see that that runway is filled in, runway 27. Up at the top of the screen, I start getting some calculations. ForeFlight tells me the weight that it's using for this calculation, my total takeoff distance, my 50 foot speed, that sort of thing. These numbers will vary based on the type of aircraft you have. There are three sections to the rest of the form. The first section is the runway section. We've selected runway 27, and ForeFlight has filled in the published data about that runway its slope, its surface type, its usable weight, any of the declared distance information. Anything in blue on this form, you can change. So if you think you have more up-to-date information about the runway or about the weather, you can tap on that information and change it to whatever you wish, and then reset it to the default if you prefer. Underneath the runway section is the weather section. So Forflight will take in the uh, latest METAR report at your departure airport, and it will fill in the weather conditions for you. You can tap the refresh button at the top of the screen to check for a up-to-date weather METAR. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the METAR that it's using, when it was issued, and the raw text for the METAR. Again, all the information is modifiable. So for example, uh, I can tap on the wind direction and change that 
I can switch between magnetic and true based on where I'm getting my wind direction, the ATIS, the AWOS from the control tower, that sort of thing. If I scroll down in this form, I get to the aircraft configuration and the calculation section. So under the aircraft configuration, this is the configuration that ForeFlight is assuming you're going to use for takeoff. And again, anything in blue you can modify. Flap settings, um, uh, additional equipment, in this case an air conditioner, you can turn it on and off. This will vary. Different aircraft have different settings, different equipment, and based on the aircraft you're flying with, you'll see different things here. Underneath that is the answers, the, the calculations. So we can see that uh, ForeFlight is telling us what our liftoff speed is, our ground roll, our 50 foot speed, the total takeoff distance, then our takeoff climb information, speed rate and gradient, and in route speed rate and gradient. Let's take a look at a different aircraft. This is a multi-engine aircraft that I had selected, and so my, my answers are going to be different for that aircraft. For example, I have accelerate stop distance calculated. I have one engine inoperative information calculated. You can do the same thing with landing. So once I've uh, departed San Diego and I'm going to land at my destination, I can tap the landing button and I get an identical form. It's all the same information, but in this case, it's actually going to calculate landing performance. You can see at the top of the screen under the weather section, it's actually not using the METAR. That's because in this case, I was still a ways out from my airport and my estimated time of arrival lined up with the, one of the forecast periods from the terminal forecast. And so ForeFlight selected that terminal for forecast for me. If I'm flying in route and I don't have an internet connection, if I have ADSB, ForeFlight will pull the terminal forecast over ADSB and pre-fill it that way instead. Of course, uh, if our aircraft is not going to be able to take off or land based on the current conditions or my current weight, ForeFlight's going to warn you about that. Here's an example of a warning. It's telling me that the outside air temperature of 27 Celsius exceeds the published limit of 22 Celsius. I believe in this case I had selected a Piper Warrior, and it turns out that Piper did not publish performance data above 22 degrees Celsius, and so ForeFlight cannot calculate it, and that's what that warning means. Here's another example of a warning. It's telling me that I'm going to uh, overrun my landing. The landing total distance exceeds the landing distance available by 117 feet. And we can see that the total distance calculation at the top is highlighted in red to bring attention to that. Here's an example of an error you might get in a multi-engine aircraft. It's telling me that my weight exceeds the max weight for my one engine inoperative by 432 pounds with the current conditions. So again, ForeFlight can alert you to whether the information that you've entered puts you out of limits or if the information you've entered simply doesn't have a matching published set of performance data in order to calculate. For more information about how this works, you can check out our performance page on our website. We have a search field. You can enter your aircraft type code and see all the performance data that we have for each of those aircraft. Take a look at the next feature, uh, FBO contacts. This is a, a pretty small feature, but we're always working on trying to save you a little bit of time when you're planning, a minute here, a minute there. FBO contacts is meant to give you a quick way to get more information or to contact an FBO that you're flying into. When you open up the FBO's view, you'll see a new row of buttons. The first button is a, is a phone. If you open up this button, if you tap on it, on a cellular capable iPad or on an iPhone, it'll call the FBO for you. We have all of the FBO phone numbers built in. The next one is the directions button. If you tap on this, ForeFlight will switch to the map application on your iPad and automatically start giving you directions from your current location to that FBO address. And finally, the email button. If you tap on that, ForeFlight will give you an email form right in the application pre-filled with that FBO's official email address, and you can ask them a question via email. So those are a few things on the Flights tab. Let's talk about the Maps tab now. One of the things we've recently added to the Maps tab is the route line in the profile view. This is the profile view. Uh, it's available to pro customers and above. If you're not familiar with it, you can access it under the Flight Plan button in the top left of the screen, and then tap on Profile in the bottom. Basically, 
We've had a profile view for a while and we've been enhancing it over time. At first it was just terrain and obstacles, then we added airspace, and in a recent version of ForeFlight we added your actual profile of your route. Top of climb and top of descent are inserted automatically based on your aircraft's performance. The cool thing about the profile view is it's fully interactive. So I can tap on it, I can pinch zoom into it to get more information. I can adjust the altitude to change my cruising altitude to be above or below any airspace or terrain. I can tap on something I see, like this MOA, and see where it is on the map and what it is and what its altitudes are. Another neat thing about the profile that isn't actually new, but that I wanted to highlight today because I don't think a lot of customers are aware, it works in conjunction with the ruler. If you're not familiar with the ruler, anywhere on the map you can take two fingers and put them down on the screen and measure a distance between your two fingers. You can see the distance, the course, as well as the estimated time uh, to transit that distance and how much fuel you would burn based on your aircraft's performance in either direction. But one of the neat things about the ruler is, once the ruler's on the screen, if you open up the profile view, it's actually going to start measuring between your two fingers instead of along your route. So it's a good way to measure airspace, obstacles, and terrain off route. You can tap on an obstacle in the profile, I get a little dot, you can see a corresponding dot on the ruler. It's a good way to pinpoint where terrain or obstacles are. The next feature uh, is related to how we visualize information, specifically in three dimensions. 3D isn't a new thing to ForeFlight. We've had synthetic vision, that 3D view out the window for a while. Um, but we've been thinking about how else we can utilize 3D information um, to make you better informed about the flight you're going to take. One of those new features that's available to performance customers is the 3D route preview. Let's say I have planned this route from San Francisco to Palm Springs, and maybe I've never flown this route before, and I've gotten the weather briefing, I've filed it, I've checked all my modems, I'm ready to go, but I really like to get a better sense of what the terrain is going to look like, what the geography is going to look like along this route. Well, there's a new button in the bottom of the flight plan drawer that says 3D, and when I tap on that, ForeFlight will automatically give me a 3D visualization of what that entire route is going to look like. I have all of my waypoints in a timeline along the bottom of the screen, and I can actually interact with this timeline so I can pinch zoom on it to get more information. I can tap and drag on it to move forward or backward in time. And the view is interactive, so I can tap on the camera and I can move it around, see what airports I'm going to be flying over, that sort of thing. So that's the 3D route preview that's available today. <laughs> uh, another cool thing that we uh, recently announced is the ability to preview a specific airport in 3D. When you tap on an airport in ForeFlight, you can open it up in 3D. We take the Jepson Terrain and Optical Database, we overlay it with satellite aerial photography. This is Aspen. You can pinch and zoom, pan around. There's two buttons in the top right corner of the screen. Those are the runways. Tap on a runway. It'll orient you on glide slope on a one mile final so you can see what the final approach is going to look like into that airport. There's a couple different ways to access this. Anywhere you see an airport in the app, you can get to it. So for example, if I tap on Aspen in my flight plan, if I was flying there, tap on that route bubble, I have an option here, show 3D view. I can get to it that way. Also, I can tap on any airport that I see on the map and once I tap on that airport, I have a new option, 3D view. That's what, another way to get to it. And then finally, when I'm viewing an airport in full screen on the airports tab, I have a 3D view button in the top right corner, and that's another way to get to it. But we realize that um, a lot of pilots aren't necessarily flying into airports. Maybe they're flying into a backcountry strip. Maybe they're going out into a remote area um, to pick something up or drop something off. And so, we realize that we don't have to limit this function to just airports. The 3D visualization function is actually available at any arbitrary point in the world. So for example, let's say I was planning a sightseeing flight to Mount St. Helens. I could go to Mount St. Helens on the map, find it, and I could tap on it. And when I tap on it, I get a 3D button in the top right hand corner. And when I tap on that button, I can see whatever I tapped on in 3D. 
and it's fully interactive, so you can move around and see it from all angles. So this works at any point on the entire planet. Okay, related to uh, improving how we visualize information, vector procedure depiction has been changed a little bit in the application in the latest version. Just to um, kind of set the stage for this, a vectored procedure, one where uh, instead of uh, exclusively being predefined fixes, where as a pilot you might need to expect vectors to affix, this is an example of one out of LA. We can see that I should expect vectors departing um, to my uh, first published waypoint on this procedure. We've changed the way that we visualize this procedure on the map view. So if you were to add this procedure to your flight plan on the map, you would see something that looks like this. We can see the uh, first published fix, Chatty, for this uh, departure, and then I have a dotted line on my first web. And that just is an indication that this is going to be a vectored procedure and you should expect vectors to get to the first fix. So those are some of the planning features. Let's talk about in-route features now, things you're going to use when you're flying in the aircraft with ForeFlight. The first one is breadcrumbs. This was another one that was very frequently requested by customers. Breadcrumbs is very simple. It's simply the ability to see your aircraft's flight path in real time on the map as you're flying. It looks like this. In order to enable it, it's available to everyone, just go into the settings menu on the map view and scroll down the breadcrumbs option and toggle it on. And when you do that, you'll see your breadcrumbs on the map. You can tap on your breadcrumbs to see information about them right here, save it as a track log for a future review, or reset it, in which case it will clear the current breadcrumbs and then start plotting new ones from that time forward. If you save it as a track log, it will be saved under the More tab in the Track Log section. These are all the flights that I have saved in the past. Runway selection. In the latest version of Warplight, you can predefine the runway that you uh, expect to land on, just as a quick uh, uh, situational awareness enhancement. When you're doing this, you can tap on the destination airport in the flight plan drawer, and you get a menu, and one of the options now is select runway. So I'll tap on that, I see all of the runways that are available. I even see, based on the current METAR, what the most favorable runway to land on would be, in this case, runway 31. I can select a runway that I want to land on, and when I do that, two things happen. At the top of the screen, we can see that runway 36 has been added to my destination, and on the map, you now get an extended runway center line coming off of the runway you expect to land on. Of course, you can change this runway after you've set it. You can tap on your destination in its flight plan drawer and select Change Runway and change it to something else. You can also tap directly on the airport on the map. And you get a series of buttons in the airport view. If you tap the last one, More, you can select your runway from this view as well. One of the nice things here is if you've planned a route on the flight plan view and you're ready to file it or you're ready to get a briefing for it, or maybe you want to calculate your takeoff and landing performance, you can send this flight using the send to menu to the flight tab. When I do that, it copies over my flight into the flight form, pre-fills all the information I have planned, and if I was to go into the landing takeoff, the landing performance, we can see that the runway I had selected on the map is pre-filled for me. Another new feature um, that came out recently is the ability for the, the built-in checklists in Foreplay to actually walk you through your checklist items via audio. So you can connect a Bluetooth headset to your iPad and it will actually speak your checklist list items to you in the headset. How this works is when you're under the More tab at the bottom of the screen in the checklist section, tap on your aircraft and tap on the checklist you want to run. There's two buttons at the bottom, check and skip. This is a way to manually check off items or skip items that's been there for a while. This button is new. This is the speak option. When I tap on it, it'll start walking through my checklist. I can tap the faster or slower button to speed it up. Morning light has switches. 
So that's a feature we think is going to be useful for a lot of pilots, and uh, you can imagine how we might continue to improve that feature in that feature in the future. Um, we're working on a lot of different ways to make that easier to use and um, a lot more useful. Another thing we've been working on is improvements to the documents view in ForeFlight. Uh, you've always been able to view uh, and modify documents in the application. You can look at documents that have been published by the FAA, by NAV Canada, Jefferson. You can also import your own documents. Uh, for example, if you have a Dropbox, you can add a bunch of folders and files into the Dropbox and they'll show up on Foreplay. But we've recently redesigned the documents view to make it a little bit easier to use. So here's the documents view in Foreplay. Up in the top of the corner are binders. These are just folders that you can organize your documents in. That's been there for a while, but we've just relocated them to the top left corner of the screen, so they're always there. And then underneath that are drives. You can think of drives as sources of published information. So for example, the FAA, they publish a ton of different documentation, handbooks, chart supplements, that sort of thing. And uh, you can access everything the FAA has published right through Foreplay. It's built in, even the, uh, the handbooks. You can tap the list button whenever you're viewing a folder to switch between this grid view and a list-oriented view. It's a little bit easier to scan. It's all the same information, just visualized a little differently. You can tap on the button again to switch back to grid view. When you're in a document, you can add it to a binder, add it to another folder to organize it by tapping on the Add to Binder button in the top right. Select the binder you want to add it to or create a new binder to add it to. We've also brought the documents functionality to the iPhone. Uh, I know a lot of customers are using Foreflight a lot more on their iPhone these days. As the iPhone screens have gotten larger, more powerful, um, Foreflight has become a lot more useful on the iPhone. We're continuing to work on bringing more of the functionality on the iPad to the iPhone. In the latest version, we brought over documents. So all that documents functionality you can access now on your iPhone. And like all the information in ForeFlight, anything you do on one iPad will sync to the other iPad or other iPhone. It all stays in sync, which is really handy. Uh, for those who've been using the iPhone for a while, you may have noticed this Documents tab. It replaced a tab that used to be there, which was Imagery, the Weather Imagery tab. That's not gone. We've just moved it. We put it under the More tab. So if you're looking for Weather Imagery on iPhone, go to the More tab. There's a whole Weather Imagery section there. Also, you can always search for a document by tapping on the search field in Foreplay. One of the nice things about searching for information in the app is you can search for any type of information you want from any view. So for example, you can open up a procedure from the maps view. You can look at airport information from the plates view. It doesn't matter where you search. Just start typing what you want and Foreplay will give you suggestions. But we've added documents to search. So if you're trying to find a specific document, you can type the name of the document into the search box and then select it from the menu to open it up. This next feature is probably one of my favorite features recently. Uh, it's called Map Annotations. For those who aren't familiar with annotations, uh, it's been a feature in the app for a while. Anywhere you see this pencil icon, it means you can draw. So you can make notes on a plate or you can draw on a document but we brought this annotation feature directly to the map view. You'll notice there's a pencil button now on the map view in the bottom left corner. <clears throat> and when I tap on that, I get a toolbar. We, we know I'm in annotation mode. I'm actively annotating because my pencil button is blue. It's active. And I get this toolbar at the top. And in the top left corner, I can change the color that I'm drawing with and the width of the stroke that I'm drawing with. In the right-hand column, I can clear my annotations, undo them, redo them. Uh, if I tap Done, I get out of annotation mode. But you can see you can draw directly on the map. And the nice thing about annotations in Forflight is they're drawn in what we call world space, which basically just means the annotations you're making are pinned to that geographic location. So if I was to zoom out from this example in Chicago, you can see that what I drew is pinned to the area that I drew it in. We wanted to take it one step further though, and we were thinking about how we can make annotating even more seamless. 
This is the Apple Pencil. It's a stylus made by Apple and it works with the iPad. It's kind of a unique stylus because it has a wireless technology in it that allows the stylus itself to communicate with the iPad that it's drawing on. What this means is Forkplate can detect the difference between, between panning with your finger and drawing with a stylus. That's really cool because it enables us to not even have to enter the annotation mode if we have an Apple Pencil. I can literally take the Apple Pencil and simply place it on the screen. Forkplate knows what you're tapping with. It knows that it's an Apple Pencil and you can start drawing immediately. And then when you lift your pencil up off the screen, Forflight uh, will actually automatically disable the annotation mode, so you can then tap with your finger and pan around. It's basically the closest thing to, to pen and paper uh, in the digital space. We're really excited about it. Another thing we announced, uh, actually just on Monday, is a new ADSP device. It's called Sentry Mini. It's sort of a little brother to our uh, larger Sentry device. For those who aren't familiar, um, historically we've had two devices that we make uh, through a partnership with UAvionics. Uh, they are the Scout on the left, it's a little ADSB receiver, it's about the size of a USB thumbstick, and then the Sentry on the right, which gives you a whole bunch of additional features like an attitude and heading system, and a WAS GPS, and a carbon monoxide sensor. Uh, but we felt like there was a gap in the product line in terms of functionality, but also price. And so this week we're introducing a new device. It's called the Sentry Mini. It's the same height and width as the regular Sentry device, but it's much, much thinner. In fact, it's, it's thinner than uh, about the same size as a pencil, a uh, really tiny device. Just for some perspective on what it is and where it fits in terms of functionality, the smallest device, the Scout, that gives you ADS-B weather and dual band ADS-B traffic in a really ultra portable form factor. The Sentry Mini builds on that by adding a WAS GPS and a feature we call Weather Replay. When you're flying along with ForeFlight on your iPad and you have the Sentry or the Sentry Mini uh, powered on, it's receiving ADS-B weather and traffic for you and sending it to the iPad. Well, you can actually turn your iPad off or switch to another app and the device will continue to receive the latest weather and traffic updates. And then as soon as you turn your iPad back on and open ForeFlight back up, those latest updates will flow immediately into the application, so you don't have to wait to reacquire that ADS-B data. That's Weather Replay. The larger brother to Sentry Mini, the Sentry, adds, in addition, an attitude heading and reference system, so that will drive that pitch and bank display in synthetic vision. It adds a carbon monoxide sensor. It's the only ADS-B portable device with an integrated carbon monoxide sensor. It can alert you, alert you to dangerous CO levels via a very loud audio alert that comes out of the device, or a Bluetooth audio alert that's sent to your headset, or a visual alert on the iPad screen. And the Sentry also includes a 12-hour lithium-ion battery. So different feature sets, different price points for each of these devices. We think there's probably a good device for every type of pilot. We think if you're not flying with ADS-B, you really should. It's a great resource, great to have on board. We're selling uh, all of our devices uh, here at the show in Hangar C, or you can check them out uh, on foreflight.com. The next thing is, is uh, pretty exciting. You know, we're all pilots at ForeFlight, we're GA pilots, and, um, and so a lot of the features we work on are based on uh, requests from customers, but also just ideas that we have. You know, we'll go flying on the weekend, we'll come into the office on Monday, and we'll think, hmm, I wish the app would do that, or uh, I wish maybe this thing worked a little differently. Um, but every so often we, we realize we're saying the same thing to each other over and over again. And this, this new thing here, Passenger, is sort of the, uh, the result of that. We realized we kept hearing the same question. Are we there yet? Um, I think that's a, a question that every pilot has probably heard at least once. And uh, we started thinking, you know, how can we answer this question? How can we better inform our passengers about where they are um, so that they don't have to wonder uh, when they're getting there? And so we built a new app. 
It's a brand new app. It's called Four Flight Passenger. It's totally free. It runs on iPad and iPhone. Anyone can download it. And it's meant for the passengers that you have in your aircraft. Once you download it from the App Store, your passenger can open it up on their device and they'll see a screen that looks like this. It says, welcome to Four Flight Passenger. Passenger is waiting for your pilot to send a flight plan from Four Flight Mobile. So let's say you get in your aircraft and uh, your passengers have an iPad or an iPhone and they've got this app on it. All you need to do is open up your device, open up Four Flight Mobile, go to the More tab, Passenger section, and enable and start passenger. And as soon as you do that, ForeFlight will start broadcasting your current GPS position and your route to all of your passengers wirelessly. You don't have to be on the same network. The devices don't have to be configured to talk to one another. The only requirement is that everyone's device has Wi-Fi on. It doesn't have to be the same network, just Wi-Fi has to be on. And once that happens, the devices can see each other wirelessly. This section here tells you when ForeFlight last updated your passengers with your route and position. If you prefer to disable the passenger mode, maybe after the flight, you can disable it there. This is what your passengers will see. They'll see a basic ForeFlight map, their aircraft position, their route they're flying, and at the top of the screen, time remaining, esti estimated time of arrival and destination local time, their current speed, altitude, and course. So that's Four Flight Passenger, again, totally free to use for anyone, and you can get more information on our website. So that's the in or out section. Let's talk about some post-flight features that are new. The first one is the ability to attach photos to your logbook entries. For those who haven't used the logbook in Four Flight, it's under the More tab, under Logbook. These are all the entries that I have in mind, and I can create a new entry. And there's a new section, Add Photo. If I tap on that, I can take a new photo with the camera, or I can select some photos that I've already taken by browsing my photo library. ForeFlight will actually automatically suggest photos for you to attach to your logbook entry based on the time that the photo was taken. Because you're flying with ForeFlight, it knows when you took off and when you landed, and each of the photos you take is automatically timestamped on iOS, and so ForeFlight knows what photos were taken during the flight and it'll prompt you to attach those automatically. This is a flight that I recently took in the Chicago area in R44. You can open up a photo and you can edit it by tapping the edit button and crop it to an area that you want, or you can tap the rotate button and rotate that photo 90 degrees. Another new post-flight feature is profile data in the track log. So if you've recorded a flight in the, uh, in the track log, which you can attach to a log book or go to the track log section and browse track logs, once you've opened up the track log, you're going to see not just the flight you flew, but also a graph of your ground speed, altitude. If you have an AHARS unit attached, it'll graph out your pitch and bank throughout the flight as well. It's fully interactive, so you can scrub back and forth, review your maneuvers, or tap the play button to play at normal speed. But of course, we've been spending all this time working on some cool 3D features, and we figured, you know, it'd be really cool to actually review the flight in 3D after you've flown it. And so that's the 3D button in the top right-hand corner. We call that 3D review. And when you tap on that, you can tap the play button and review the flight that you flew in 3D. Again, this is the Jefferson Terrain and Obstacle Database uh, with a satellite aerial overlay. This is your actual GPS track and altitude. If you have an AHARS unit, it will have recorded the pitch and bank, so you'll see accurate pitch and bank. You can scrub along the bottom of the timeline to move forward and backward in time, that sort of thing. So those are some of the new features in ForeFlight this year. We're not done yet. There's plenty more coming throughout the rest of the year. Uh, but please stop by and see us in Hangar C. Again, that's the URL for uh, Wings Credit if you want to get that. These three links here are pretty useful. Foreflight.com slash videos. This course is being recorded and will be available to view for free after the show, along with all the other courses we have. But that videos page actually has a video for every feature in Foreflight. Every time we make something new, we create a little five minute video, how it works, how to use it, and it's uh, there on the videos page. And you can search for whatever you're interested in. 
Also, fourthlight.com slash support. That's the place you can go to look at FAQs, knowledge base articles, contact our support team. It's also where you can download the pilot's guide. It's basically the manual to the application. It's one chapter for every feature. And finally, fourthlight.com slash releases. If you're ever wondering, what's the latest version of Fourthlight or what came out recently? You can go to that page. That's every release, when it came out, and what was in it. And don't forget about our pilot support team. They're available all the time. Team at fourthlight.com. Send them an email. If you prefer phone support, just send your phone number and a time that you're available, and they'll give you a ring. So thanks for coming. I hope that was useful. I hope there's some exciting things you learned today. Um, we have about 15, 20 minutes. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Yes, sir, Matt. Morning. Morning. Yeah, good question. So the question is, uh, the alternate advisor that I was showing, does that take into account the forecast conditions? Um, and how does it determine what alternates to suggest? And the answer is yes. So for all, each of those alternates, it will look at your estimated time of arrival at, if you were to fly to that alternate. It will look at the closest terminal forecast block for that alternate, and that's the weather it's going to use. There's actually a lot more heuristics beyond just that that go into those alternate advisor suggestions. We're using a technology called machine learning to improve these alternate suggestions over time. And as more people use them, they're going to get even more relevant for each pilot. Yes, sir. Sure, so the question is uh, the performance data um, for aircraft. What if I fly an experimental and uh, my manufacturer hasn't published performance data? Um, oh, what do I do? And the answer is there is no way right now to enter custom takeoff and landing performance data for experimental aircraft. Um, we're working on adding more and more aircraft in every release. Um, stay tuned is the best I can say on that feature. Yes, sir. I have Pro Plus, and on the flight planning part, the selected altitude looked like it was just corrected for wind to get more, uh, really useful. I assume I have to upgrade Yeah, so the question is, um, I'm flying with the Pro Plus subscription, and um, I'm wondering, you know, in terms of flight optimization, altitude optimization, what, you know, what would the benefit of performance be, right? What, why should I upgrade? Well, the performance package basically provides a couple of useful things that make the answers for flight and give you more accurate. The first is, it uses uh, the performance profiles for your aircraft. For each aircraft, for every performance profile, for example, 2200 RPM, 2300 RPM, there's over 30,000 data points that go into each profile, and they calculate your aircraft's performance at all different temperatures as you climb and descend, as you burn fuel. So that's the one benefit. Um, in addition to that, those performance profiles are what are used to suggest an alternate, uh, an optimized route, and the optimum altitude. That's the main benefit of the performance subscription. Other questions? Yes, sir. XM weather now appears to be morphing, and we're forced to use uh, Garmin products, PDL, which one of two. SXAR1 is now no longer supported. Where it's still it? supported. It's just, I don't believe they sell it anymore, but we still support it. Well, you can't get it repaired this way. You can't get it repaired if it's gone belly up. Yeah, that would be an XM thing, yeah. Yeah. Well, XM doesn't even validate they know the manufacturer. So my point is, do you have any plans in your works? As you did with the Sentry, of course, an economical XM weather or an economical XM weather receiver, so we don't have to go to Garmin. Sure. So the question is XM weather. You know, um, there's been a variety of XM weather products that have come out on the market and then have been discontinued by manufacturers. One of them was the Baron Link a while ago. The latest example of that is the SX AR1 made by Sirius XM. Forflight supports both of those and will continue to do so. Uh, the question is do we have plans based on the devices we've made ourselves to maybe support? XM weather in a device? Uh, and the answer is, I can't speak to future plans, unfortunately. Um, we're always looking at ways we can add more value to these devices, and we'll continue to work on interesting ideas. So maybe in the future, but I can't promise anything right now. Are there solutions besides the Garmin product? The GDL 5152 product line are the only modern, currently manufactured XM devices for light supports.
Anything else? Yep. In flight planning, especially for longer flights, without an aircraft that can, that can fly high, it always seems so limiting that we only get to select one altitude. And now, if you'll have the performance data, especially for planes that can fly high, mm -hmm. would it be possible for the yeah, it can. So uh, the question is, um, if you're flying an aircraft up high, uh, what if um, it's more efficient to maybe fly at different altitudes, maybe a step climb, something like that, right? For flight will suggest step climbs for you automatically. Uh, when you're planning a flight, let me go into my iPad here. When you're planning a flight in the flights view, and it's a long flight, so let me do something like here to LA. and it's a long flight, and let me put an aircraft in here that can actually make that distance. Mm -hmm. What do I have in here? Um, when you generate a nav log for this flight, if there are step climbs required, you will see the step climbs in the altitude section here, in the altitude section of the nav log, so it will calculate your step climbs for you at the point at which you should make the step climb. When you're, when you're flying the flight, when you're on the flight plan view and you have multiple waypoints in here, so let me insert um, a waypoint here, something like, um, let's go to like San Monica or something. Um, when you tap on a waypoint, you can set an altitude and speed per waypoint, like that. And when you do that, ForeFlight will actually plot out the route of with your, those speeds and altitudes along the route. So it can suggest step climbs, and also you can manually set different altitudes to fly at as well. But you have to, you have to put the fixes in. You have to put the fixes in. Yes. You yeah. suggest a, you know, 150 east of a fix climb or descent at this altitude. It will in the nav log. But yeah, when you're, when you're actually flying with it, when you send it to the flight, you'll need to set altitude and speeds on the flight plan drawer. That's a feature we're going to continue to improve. There's a lot that can be improved there. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, if I have the jet charts, can I go to the flight stream to the JPN? The chart itself? The chart itself? Yeah, so the question is, let's say I have jet charts in core flight. Can I send the jet chart to my avionics stack over Bluetooth? Um, the answer is no. The only sort of Bluetooth connectivity Forflight supports is GPS, flight plan transfer, attitude, and heading. We don't support the ability to update a chart on avionics or update, update a nav database on avionics. Yes, sir? The new Sentry device and all of the devices I talked about up here connect via Wi Fi, not Bluetooth. In the back. Yeah, so the question is, when I'm flying along, connected to ADSB, why can't I get a weather briefing? And the answer is the FAA doesn't publish weather briefings over ADSB. You can look at other weather products in flight, like radar, radars, pilot reports, but the actual briefing itself requires an internet connection. Once you've received a briefing on the ground, it's saved on your device so you can reference it in the air. Yeah. Sure. So the question is, let's say I, um, let me zoom out here a little bit. Let's say I am uh, like zoomed out to this area of the map here and I wanted to tap on San Antonio in the center. Um, well, let's say I tap here and I tap on something and, oh, that's not San Antonio, that's an airway, right? Um, instead of tapping individually on the target you want, if you're zoomed out, just take your finger and press and hold a long tap. And when you press and hold, it'll show you all the things nearby where you tapped. And then you can quickly say, oh yeah, that's, that's the thing I want right there. So long press and short, instead of short press. Yep. In, uh, in the math mode, you have uh, X-ray radar. Is it possible in flight to get a stream? To get a what? Stream it like you do for Wi-Fi. You hit the play button and play with it. Yeah, so for radar, when you're flying in flight, um, on the ground, there are two types of radar, composite and lowest tilt. In flight, there's only one option available, that's composite. That's the only radar product ADS-B provides. But you can animate it in flight. You tap the play button like you would normally and it will animate it. 
If you aren't able to animate it, it simply means that the EBSB network hasn't yet propagated those frames to you yet. Yeah, in the back. Can you speak a little louder? I, I can't hear you. Yeah, yep, good question. So um, when you're looking at radar on the internet, um, it looks quite nice. It's uh, smooth, and uh, as you zoom in, it'll load higher resolution, and it'll add things like storm attributes, like tracks and uh, echo tops and things like that. The reason we do that on the ground is to give you better information about the storm. When you're flying with ADS-B in flight, the ADS-B NextRad feed is virtually unprocessed. It's almost a raw data feed right off the NextRad system for two reasons. One, to get it to you faster so that you have it when, it's, when you need it over the network, um, but also simply because um, the bandwidth limitations of the ADS-B network don't allow higher resolution imagery beyond what's available. There's actually two resolution levels to ADS-B. There's national and local or regional ADS-B. So when you're flying, you should see a slightly better resolution nearby you versus farther away, but yeah, it's still blocky, and that's just a limitation of the ADS-B network. Yes, sir. Is there a way to control what range of traffic you see on the display? For sure. So the question is, is there a, an ability to control the range of traffic I see? Maybe I'm cruising along at 3,000 feet, and four flights showing me JetBlue 997 at 34,000 feet, right? Who cares? Um, and the answer is yes, there is a feature in Fort Flight. It's under the More tab, under the Settings section. Here's all the settings, and it's called Hide Distant Traffic. See this option right here? When you turn that on, Fort Flight will actually hide traffic that's not within 3,500 feet above or below you. Um, so it's only going to show you stuff that is more relevant to your aircraft. Is there a distance associated with distant traffic? There is. Do you know the distance off Like 30 miles. 30 miles. Anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, how do you portray climb via clearances? Climb via clearances. Uh, with your step climbs and so forth, does it populate the waypoints at the altitude? It will in the nav log. It, it, I don't believe it currently does that on the flight plan drawer. So you'd have to reference the actual SID procedure to see climb via information. And on settings menu, the use GPS slider button, can you describe it please for me? In the settings menu? Yes. Which one are you talking about? Use GPS. Are you familiar, Thomas, with Use GPS? So? Yeah. Uh, so let's say you're connected to a couple of different devices, oh. like the Sentry or something like that, that can provide GPS to your device. And you also have a cellular GPS iPad that has its own GPS chip in there. Yeah. That slider is telling, or allowing you to pick what device you're using your GPS signal from. So if you've got a couple of options in your aircraft, that switch on whatever when it says use GPS, is that going to ForeFlight or your other device? In other words, That's ForeFlight. If you have a device toggled on, use GPS. ForeFlight will use the GPS signal from that device to show your aircraft position only in ForeFlight. And if it's off, then it uses the iPad side. Correct. If it's off, it'll use the default source, which may be the, the actual iPad, yeah. Got it. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question is, in the 3D review feature I was showing, um, in addition to the terrain and uh, obstacle and, and satellite imagery, what about uh, reviewing any traffic that was received during that flight? Um, we actually show real-time traffic in synthetic vision today. Um, in terms of the possibility of showing uh, review traffic, perhaps in the future, it's, it's, it's not a feature we have today, but it's a good idea. Yes, sir.
Yeah, so the question is um, the, the satellite imagery and the 3D views. Well, um, you know, how do I, where does that come from? And uh, when I'm using it in flight, I can't get the imagery. The imagery is downloaded when you're on the internet. So if you were to open up a 3D preview when you're on the internet, it'll start streaming in that imagery. Uh, the database itself, the terrain database, is built into the app. Um, so it's always there. If you want to make sure that you have all of the 3D imagery for a given route, so you can preview that, that route in flight after you've taken off, when you're on the maps view and you have a route entered, if you tap, I'm sorry, if you tap the pack button, one of the pack options is 3D view aerial imagery. And you can actually pre-download all the aerial imagery for the entire route that you've planned so you can have it with you when you fly. It's a 25 nautical mile corridor, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the, the, the question is, uh, what about a new iPad? What's a, a good amount of memory for an iPad? Um, we generally recommend, if you're in the market for a new iPad, get the newest model you can. So go to the Apple Store or Best Buy and get the newest model. The screen size you choose is up to you, whatever one you're more comfortable with. Get the cellular model. Only the cellular model has a GPS built in. And in terms of storage, we recommend a minimum of 32 gigabytes. Absolute minimum. You can use 32 gigabytes, it'll download everything Core Flight has. Now, if you have more stuff, other apps, photos, and videos, and things like that, maybe consider upgrading to 64 or 128. If you got the 256, you would never have to worry about storage again for the life of that iPad. Yeah, all the way in the back. So the question is, are future upgrades included in the purchase price? And the answer is yes, absolutely. That's how Four Flight works. You subscribe to Four Flight Mobile uh, on one of the subscription levels, and in every release, we put new features into each of those subscription levels. So as long as you're subscribed to Four Flight, you'll keep getting new features every four to six weeks, basically, is how often we ship things for everyone. Anything else? Yeah. Say, I'm sorry, say that again? Linking up to a Dynon. A Dynon, yeah. On the iPad, will I only see navigational information or will I be able to see some of the information? Yeah, so the question is, let's say I have a Dynon panel. Um, what sort of information, if I connect my iPad to my panel, will I get? The answer is it depends on the manufacturer and the model. You can stop by our booth in Hangar C. We have a full printout of every feature that every panel supports with Four Flight. It's also on our website. Um, in terms of engine monitoring, there is no manufacturer today that we support engine monitoring information from. Yeah. Do you have a cellular iPod? Is it best to turn the cellular off? Sure. So the question is, um, let's say I have a cellular model iPad which again is the one we suggest because it has the internal GPS. Uh, but I also have maybe a Stratus, um, which also has a GPS in it. Should I turn the cellular off on the iPad? And the answer is, you don't have to. It will use the internal GPS until you connect to Stratus, and then it will use the Stratus GPS. That being said, if you're flying and you don't have cell cellular signal, you could turn the cellular data off just to save battery, because it's gonna keep trying to scan for cell towers. So that's a good idea. If you're not anticipating cellular data, you can turn it off. It won't impact anything with four flight. Sorry? Yeah, so if you do anticipate having cellular data, um, for example, where I am in Chicago, I'm flying low in a helicopter, I keep cellular on um, just so I have a network connection. Um, you can keep it on, that's fine. But the second you connect to Stratus, all of your weather information is going to come over ADSB. It's not going to come over the cellular data. Does that make sense? If you have if you have cellular service, is there a benefit to using both at the same time? It depends on what you want to do. If you wanted to amend your VFR flight plan through the flight view in flight, and you had cellular data, you could do that. Um, it really depends on the features you want to use. But the second you connect ADSB, all your weather is going to come over ADSB. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. How do I make sure I'm always updated to the latest version of Four Flight? 
The best way to make sure you're updated to the latest version is to go into the App Store. The App Store is right here. And once you're in the App Store, you can open up the Updates section. If I have cell service in here. Once you're in the App Store, you'll get an Updates option at the bottom of the screen. Open that up, you'll see all the apps that have updates available. Um, you can also set your iPad to automatically update applications. That's actually not something we recommend. Um, the worst time to find out about a new feature in ForeFlight is when you're about to take off. So um, we generally recommend turning off automatic updates and just manually going to the App Store to check for updates. And the latest version is always on our website, foreflightcom slash releases. Yes, So the question is, let's say that I fly into an airport that's unpublished. Um, is there a way to import my own airport? ForeFlight does support um, a couple things. We support custom user waypoints. So you can find wherever your airport is on the map by searching for it by an address or finding it on the map. And you can actually save that latitude and longitude as a thing. So I'll call it my airport. And when I do, it's plotted on the map. I can then navigate to my airport simply by referencing it here, like that. Um, we also support a more in-depth feature called a content pack. And a content pack is basically a set of navigational data that you yourself have that you can import into ForeFlight and associate information with. So for example, if you had your own unpublished airport and you had charts or things that were relevant to that airport, a content pack lets you import that into ForeFlight. You can stop by our booth and hang your seat, and we can go through how content packs work, work or uh, we have a video on our website, ForeFlight.com. Anything else? Yeah? Most of the stuff you The features that we talked about today, we talked about features that are available across many different subscription levels. Um, so for a breakdown of each feature and what subscription it's in, it's on our website where you can stop by our group in Okay, we are out of time. Thank you so much for coming today. Appreciate it.